<laughs> oh, it will not be pretty. Um, Sam, Harry couldn't be on the podcast today, but his dog Biscuit is filling in. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, they say you start looking more and more like your dog is an owner. Your dog starting to sound more and more like Harry. Mm-hmm. Hush, oh, shut your mouth. Look at that hat, big, big hat, no cattle. That's damn right. I had one cow for many years. It was a Longhorn, and I think somebody took it. One of the Black Rifle Coffee guys asked if they could have it, and I said, yeah, if you can ship it out. They took it. <laughs> ship it out. So. But uh, You guys blowing up with your fancy microphones? Those are, those are this not... This is a off- professional organization, Sam, yes. as you know. Shit. As you know. Shit. Come a long Shit. way. Shit. How are your kids doing? Everybody doing all right? Everything's great. My son Sammy was home. I took him to the train this morning. Uh, oh, nice. Shot like 20 ducks when he was down here and uh, got time on the water, which is, and we got, I got to take him to see the OG hip hop artist Schooly D. You guys remember looking at my Gucci? It's about that time. <laughs> wow. Speaking of Gucci, yeah. I yeah. mean, I put those up just for, for you. Reason. For a reason. Schooly D played our pub. We just, <laughs> We just hosted Kevin Johnson, the NBA All Star, oh, nice. Kevin Asado, and the whole. It was the first ever inaugural board retreat for the National Black Brewers Association. And awesome. They, were, they just left Coastal Delaware yesterday. Nice. How'd That's that go? It was, it was amazing. I mean, it was such awesome energy, and that group's coming to craft beer with like just a renewed sense of opportunity. They're not jaded like us old, uh, right? You know, us old folk. Right. I mean, it's kind of about time, right? <laughs> it is. It is. You look at how many black people drink. Woohoo! Double fist and gin. When you look at how many how many black drinkers of beer there are versus how many black people are in industry versus how many black people are in industry you have equity where they work. So it's an interesting right. moment in Boston beer. We're all in on on you know being a resource and a partner in every way we can for those for those for those friends of ours. Very cool. Well. Sam, thank you for being on BeerNet Radio, the podcast where all your dreams come true. Sam Calagione, of course, of uh, Dogfish Head. And yeah, he's here to talk new products. He's here to talk business. He stands on business. The man has been, he's done it all. You know, one of the things, uh, uh, you took a road trip in your Tesla with like your dogs and shit and like bikes. And I, I, I want to, we'll, we'll talk about that offline. But I'm thinking of doing that this summer, just doing kind of an East Coast run from Florida up just to meet with wholesalers that I haven't seen in 10 years and just rent a van or something and just do it. Bring my dog and my one wheel electric skateboard, which I can't stop talking about. And so I need tips, tricks and techniques. All right. So, Jen, why don't you uh, lead us off and uh, uh, ask Sam some questions? Yeah, sure. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard the doorbell, but uh, the beer elves brought me some some tasty treats, some Nordic Spring and some colderest, colderestest IPA. <laughs> so literally that, as as we were starting the podcast, they, they showed up. They they did. They uh, somehow they reached the doorbell. They're elves, but they must have <laughs> spontaneously grown tall. And that's called just in middles. time inventory. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know everyone's going digital, even even elves. But uh, where to start, Sam? I mean, you know, I know you guys had like craft a little bit of a tough year last year, but you definitely saw some great spots, right? You 90 minute was up. That's an OG brand that was up like yeah. 5%. Citrus squall was a top new innovation. Can yeah. cocktails growing double digits, right? So um, yeah, just to, let's get the business out of the way so we can talk Woo! about the fun stuff, right? Like right. like a mullet will be business up front party in the back half of this thing. That's how I live my life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what were the, what were the biggest drivers of growth and the biggest detractors from growth? Sweet. So I would say biggest drivers of growth is young people that consume a lot of alcohol, like <laughs> and cocktails, and they like big singles of high ABV craft beers. And then I would say biggest challenges to growth is younger people that drink a lot of alcohol are doing less shopping right now in the three tier system on, uh, I would call them four six packs and four 12 packs. Yep. And so I think like a lot of top 50 IRI defined craft brands, we felt both, we felt the frictions I just mentioned, but unlike some, you know, because we've 
had a cock had a distillery for 22 years um we did get to go where a lot of the young drinkers are going which is towards the spirit space can cocktail yeah. uh, space where we've been for uh, like 10 years counting crowlers but really four years in 12 ounce and uh it's been going great double digits every year and we're, we're we're gaining momentum right now and adding new packages there um so yeah uh, and then as you said 90 minutes i mean uh, uh, you guys are always covering craft beer in a beautiful way and always drinking it uh maybe jen more than harry uh unless he's gonna dip in when he's enjoying it but uh <laughs> but what we're seeing in, what we're seeing in, uh, a lot which is really exciting is as you said 90 minutes up the og imperial ipa it's been in our portfolio for 27 i think over 29 years or something like that but west coast ipa and the return of clear bitter mm. ipa is something that we're bullish on to such an extent we're like all right we're going to do another innovation that we pause to say wait we got the new packaging of 60 and 90 minute out we have positive trends on 90 and improving trends on 60 we we need to give these more focus because younger drinkers are kind of now discovering west coast I, ipa mm. we've been we've been there since the start are you guys seeing any of that do young people drink IPAs like when I'm talking about Zoomers? They love it, don't they? Especially the hoppier, the better. That 90 minutes, man. You put it in that that hopperator and it just goes to town. Operator. I mean, listen, th this guy was using robots before robots were cool. Cause the hop Mr. Hopperator is like the this is pre-AI. It's like the first it, AI in beer. What was it called? It was uh the well, we had the uh... Randall the Enamel Animal. and That's what I'm please, talking about. Please visit our website. We've just perfected the design of Randall. Exit through the gift store. Don't don't go to the website right now during this amazing podcast, but after <laughs> after uh, you leave here elated and all tingly with adrenaline from everything that we've talked about, then go to dogfish.com and check out our real-time uh, spicing device called Randall the Enamel Animal. Yes, Harry, we like to have a lot of fun uh, with inventions. Yeah. Uh, listen, you know who loves Randall is Biscuit. Biscuit, you would you would go to town on that Randall, wouldn't you? Oh, you would he's like, leave me alone. It out. <laughs> if it's not dog biscuits or meat, <laughs> don't don't tell me about it. But no, I'm I'm interested. So you think West Coast IPA is actually going to make a comeback this year? I do. Like we're we're we just uh, did a collaboration with our friends at Other Half. Jen, I know you're real familiar mm -hmm. with them. Hot shit cult brewery. That's not yep. it started in Brooklyn, but a bunch of locations in the Northeast from DC to the Adirondacks. And they're, just, they're about to celebrate their 10th anniversary. And they did four collaborations with four of their favorite uh, breweries. And they said one of the real touchstones starting other half was 60 minutes. So uh, they, they came down, we did the collaboration, but like us, they're like, yeah, we have more hazies on tap in our draft room, but tap line for tap line, our West coast IPAs outselling any of our single uh, hazies. Uh, and I, I've heard that uh, Dewey Beer Company down the road from us, same thing they, they've said. So, yeah, I do think that it's going to be a great, great year for, for West Coast IPAs 2024 on both coasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, interesting. So I'm curious. I don't know if you've read the papes, Sam, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Mary from Whole Foods quite well. And she yep. was at our summit talking about like flavor fatigue a little bit. And that plays into every kind of RTD, right? Like including the canned cocktails type thing. What's your read on that, right? I mean, in five years, I know they're growing well. The canned cocktails are growing well. The RTDs are growing well. But in five years, do you think we'll still be drinking those things? Do you think consumers will still be drinking those things? Or do you think it's a little bit of a boom bust? Um, you know, obviously, I've got a, a dogfish in this uh, fight. Sure. Uh, you got a dogfish in this fight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with, with our canned cocktails. But for us, when we look at bringing our full proof spirits into you know, first crawlers and then ready to pour before we even yep. ready to drink with stuff like Sonic Archaeology. And then watching the way my kids and Harry, you can speak to this too, are, are, are drinking. I got one kid that's a craft beer, uh, full all in uh, lover, Sammy. And then my daughter, Greer, couldn't give a shit about any ale or lager. And she loves uh, cocktails and mm -hmm. cider, interestingly mm -hmm. enough. And cider's over indexing like in a lot of uh, mm -hmm. you know, university towns. So I think uh, that that uh, um, is is also going to be a, a a you know really energetic category for us. But I, I would say you know we're bringing out actually higher ABV cocktails because on social people we love your seven ABVs, but we love to get something even more uh, intensely flavorful. Um, 
So yeah, we're bullish on the category. And as you guys know, with across our BBC portfolio, our strategy is, is not just dogfish and spirit space. We have our truly bo- uh, uh, vodka sodas and tequila sodas in the light and refreshing space, dogfish on the higher ABV. And now we, we're launching in some regions our, our Sun Cruiser brand, which is a non-carbonated, yeah. low, lower yeah. calorie yeah. Uh, vodka tea. Uh, and we've been making obviously awesome tea, tea, tea drinks with twisted tea for 30 years. So we're, 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 we're big believers at Boston beer in the spirits based can or, uh, just spirits based RTD. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for years to come. Did anyone ever tell you you look like Carrie Brownstein from Sleater Kinney? Jen, who is, not, who, who not is you, Harry. <laughs> not you, Harry. Who, I look, know, but look up. Uh, Sam, it's you know it's breath. a dangerous thing to tell a woman she looks like another woman. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, unless, unless it's Salma Hayek or Margot Robbie, okay? That's just yeah. a pro tip. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> or Sophia Loren, or, you know, I mean, the classics. Sophia but anyway, Loren. She's she better in the be ground. smoking hot and super she is hot. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. But, Sam, what you said yeah. rings true. I got three sons. One drinks spirit RTDs because he thinks he's rich. Yeah. <laughs> one drinks craft beer and then i have a loser son that drinks wine which is that <laughs> which wait that? oh harrison harrison I've always disinherited him yeah wine yeah. what a loser <laughs> what, what a loser he sells does he real drink estate. wine out of a can does he drink it no. out of a can no he drinks it out of a bottle like an old person wow. it's disgusting mid-range straight from the bottle though to yeah. be fair he drinks he josh. It. Josh, josh wine <laughs> But I have a question just to show that to show yeah. that I can speak and that I also listen to our guests. Sure. Um, Sun Cruiser, how long has that been in market? Honestly, we only announced it I think three or four months ago, and we're just bringing it out. It can't be too specific on yeah. which markets, but it's not going to be in every state by this summer. But it's going to be in a whole bunch of states from coast to coast ahead of Memorial Day. Cool. And we've been playing on you know between our work with. Uh, teapot which i'd also love to check in with you on i'd love yeah. to get you guys take on the delta nine thing too totally but between our work on teapot so non-elk based uh you know tea recipes that we're using for thc and our work with twisted tea annette our blend team have been working on this vodka based tea recipe for sun cruise for uh, i'd say over five years wow okay it's delicious it's delicious yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll definitely be looking out for that. So you guys have been working on it for a while. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. When are we going to see craft bounce? It's been a depressing few years, right? Like, does this contraction remind you of the mid nineties? Although you guys were kind of just starting in the mid nineties, right? But what's yeah. going to happen? Yeah. I mean, we, and we lived through that first shake out, I'd say the nadir of that one was 99, 2000. And what I see right now, and especially talking a lot of the, the black brewers that were in town yeah. is I think it's like a healthy sign when uh, it's like the, the hermit crab moment when a bunch of shells have been vacated uh, <laughs> and, and you got some nude crabs scrambling around saying, am I in this to win this and finding a bigger, a bigger uh, shell or are they going to get eaten by a mm-hmm. seagull? Yeah. And I, see, I, see, I see a lot of folks taking the, 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 whether I mentioned other half who I think two or three of their breweries were from the, bones of breweries that couldn't that didn't make it in those sites and in those Mm. uh, brewing systems uh my buddies at dewey beer company in delaware just announced a small brewery in denver same taking over an existing challenged uh brewery so i think those moments actually act as moment momentum builders for the recovery because it brings brewers into facilities where they didn't overly invest in the dollars and it allows them to put more money and energy into innovation and into branding. And I feel it kind of catapults towards the next uh, moment of, 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 of surging growth. Um, so I, I feel, I don't think 2024 is going to have craft beer growth because of where I hear, especially from chains, where they're, what they're doing with, with uh, uh, shelf space. But yeah. I do think we're get, we're, there's going to be an eyeball prop where it's like, huh, there's some nice green shoots here. And I could really see 2025 being a year where there, there's more craft. The other thing we got to realize is we're talking mostly about three tier craft. And I, I do think, and, and you guys live in two craft centric ne- next to wood. I think tasting room direct to consumer craft 
is super duper healthy. Yeah. Uh, there might not be the the line out the door hot shit cult breweries opening at the same rate that there are there was three years ago, five years ago. But I think that sector is super healthy right now. Yeah. And it's funny that it, you're kind of describing a full circle back to contract brewing, which obviously how Boston Beer got started as a contract brewer. And it, there's just so much capacity. There's so much iron out there that it's really foolish to build a packaging brewery and tap. You know this. They're totally different businesses. I mean, you've run restaurants. Hell, you have a hotel now. How's yeah. the hotel going? I want to stay yeah. there. In the black, it's just 18 rooms, so it's a wee little business unit, uh, but it's in the black, so celebrating its 10th year as the first beer-themed hotel in America. And when you do that trip up the East Coast this summer, Harry, please do stay there. We partner with our friends at Priority Bikes. Uh, that's a bike company out of Metro New York City. Uh, and we've got both uh, non-conventional bikes, and now we got seven or eight Dogfish e-bikes, and we help to build a network of trails uh along the coast to get people on on these e-bikes you can hit three or four different dogfish locations and seven or eight other indie craft so we're trying to make coastal delaware a real destination for you know adventurers beer adventurers not just for dogfish but but for our, our uh community so hotels doing well we say there's a rallying cry over the fireplace that i printed painted on there that says welcome to lewis mother nature let's do this uh, it's all about getting people out, outside in the in the beauty of Mother Nature. I love that. I'll bring my one wheel and and I'll bring my dog. Biscuit, look how excited <laughs> she is. Oh my God, she can't contain oh, herself. Biscuit. She loves breweries with dog in the name. Right, Biscuit? <laughs> look at her. She's just going crazy. She's covering her eyes, like making stuff. <laughs> I mean, Sam, if you had to live with Harry, that's exactly how you would be. <laughs> She's just <laughs> exhausted. She's exhausted all the time. Oh, oh yeah. No, I've definitely uh, I'll do that. And did you say I I uh Yeah. Did you say you you have a company managing that hotel for you so you don't have to? Or No, I mean we we manage that ourselves. A woman named Seth uh runs the joint and uh, like I said, it's 17 rooms and uh it's it's uh it's it's thriving, you know. It's it's a lot of fun. We're we're working with uh WXPN, which is a great indie uh, uh, you know, uh, m a music station in the Metro Philly area on an in package. We have a band called Sluice, a really good indie rock band playing tonight with people staying at our hotel. So we use it for, for programming, uh, but we also love using it for uh, our distributors who come mostly in the spring and fall, winter when it's not as, as tour centric, and they can really do a deep dive on the Dogfish brand and visit all of our locations. So we use. Do you it hear that, distributors? You know, when A.B. and Molson Coors is just putting you up in like Caesar's Palace or some shitty hotel, <laughs> uh, Sam actually bought a hotel for you. So, yeah. who, who, you know, who do you love? Um, Come visit us, distributors. Yeah. Well, on let me I want to get your uh, view on Spirit RTDs. Um, you know, that category is still kind of smallish compared to beer. It's it's growing, but my contention is it's just a rough price point to get around. You know, meaning it's high or in an awkward middle place. What do you mean by? I, I think in the high, especially like if it's a replacement for a mixed drink, it's just a tough proposition. What's what's your view on that? Although maybe you know, I'm still living in the '90s where I always think that just people shop on price. And Jen obviously does not. Jen picks the most expensive thing on every menu. Trust That's me, I've been out true. with her. That's not true anyway. <laughs> That's only true when you get the company card out, right, Jen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear your take on this too, because, um, uh, you know, I think if you look at High Noon, it's it's a, a, a premium to, you know, Truly and uh, White Claw in the seltzer place. And that's based on the, the vo vodka, uh, you know, proposition, I, I think. Uh, but I, I do think it's still a really approachable um, price point. I might be naive when I say this, but I feel like the spectrum of pricing from there up to dogfish and cutwater is is not out, outlandish when you put it in the context of the fastest growing foolproof spirits. I'm um, thinking more whiskey and boutique gins, especially and boutique tequilas. That spectrum of where there's actually volume is really, really wide on that 80 proof proposition for uh, for for high end tequilas and and whiskeys, so you know I don't I don't feel I don't feel like we're hearing that pushback on our pricing in that you know seven ABV uh, fourteen fifteen dollar uh, four pack uh, uh, range in in metro markets where where it tends to be. Jen, Jen, what are you what are you feeling? 
I mean, I think that seems pretty fair. I mean, I remember when Sculpin was like freaking nineteen dollars a six pack, <laughs> like ten years ago. Yeah, I, I I think it overlaps um, in the four to eight ABV, like for for the yeah. uh, for the lower for the high noon uh, yeah. uh, uh, drinker. But I think that the the higher, whether it's Dogfish, Cutwater, Fisher Island, I think there's less price sensitivity. Mm -hmm. What is interesting, I could be wrong on this. I think Jack and Coke might might be the anomaly, and I think that's a really good tasting yeah. uh, can canned cocktail. Curious on what you guys both think. But otherwise, I I haven't seen whiskey gain much traction in the spirits based RTD space because I think totally to cool. Harry, Harry's point, people kind of want to pour that drink themselves, see it come out of the big bottle with a brand on it at 80 proof over water or over ice or do what they want. Whereas I think if it's something like a rum or a vodka, they're more open to the creativity of multiple ingredients that somebody thoughtfully constructed for them instead of them going around the kitchen, finding a bunch of stuff to put in there. Totally true. I, the spirit branded RTDs really haven't done that well. Like you said, Jack and Coke, notwithstanding. And um, they've had a real rough time. Uh, uh, new to world brands seem to dominate that segment. And, you know, at Dogfish Head, y'all have a real, I think, a huge benefit in that it's 7%. I think that's when I hear people complain about high noon, it's always, well, it's, it's only 5% and it's so expensive. And, you know, that calculation is going on a lot of people's heads, even though obviously not a lot of, you know, it's obviously doing very well yeah. and continues to grow. But, um, it's a nice differentiator. Yeah. And we come out our 12 ABV, you know, so we're, we're coming out with a passion fruit, citrus vodka mule, and we're coming out with a pineapple orange rum Mai Tai. And as we've gotten better at making these recipes, you know, we've got more efficient in our distillery and packaging. So the, our 12 ABVs are going to be line priced with our seven ABVs. Um, so I think, you know, I, I think uh, to your point here, I think we're going to be, finds a lot of success at that higher ABV. that'll get you going yeah for sure. when do those 12 <laughs> abvs hit so they hit around march where you know we're we're, de we're de developing the packaging now everything else is locked in so we're we're just calling it around look for them around march is what okay. i as exact as i could be cool cool which of cool. the beers are you having jen right, let's talk beer remember let's beer, talk beer. Rem I yeah remember, remember beer it. Hey, I yeah. have a, a prediction because, oh, this is, yeah. gosh, you just tee me up so well, Sam. Um, let's talk predictions because we've got predictions running Monday. I want to hear nice. your predictions. But one of my predictions, which may or may not make the cut, I think it's going to be, especially for these taproom breweries, especially that are doing well, right, that are basically restaurants, it's going to be yeah. the resurgence of craft lager. <clears throat> just yeah. easy drinking. You get the local cred. I mean, it, you know, might as well be a domestic, but it's not going to happen. I'll take years. that bet. I'll take that bet. I'm not talking so about it. Do we want to start with the predictions and keep going down yeah. the road? You yeah. let the cat out of the bag. John, should we? You, so I would say, again, we do have a, a dog in this fight, but not dogfish because we are going to go hard with our, our uh, American Lager? light. Yeah. Oh, our, our okay. American light. Okay. Sam, Sam Adams. And to give you an idea, like to collapse time on the R&D for our American light recipe, we did four or five batches at uh, Delaware Dogfish and four or five up at Sam Adams Brew Pub in uh, Jamaica Plain, Boston. And when we brew them, they're, they're, they're true lighter, light beers, you know, kind of triangulating between Modelo and yep. Bud Light and Sam Boston Lager, but uh, it's pretty unique uh, hopping and, and yeast stuff, more to come on that. And But when we came, when we brewed it in our own facility, we're like, well, we have uh, Blue Hen Pills. Let's not put that on tap. Even though we brewed it, we've got awesome learns, but let's dump it. I'm like, nah, fuck it. Let's put it on tap. We gave it a, dip a different name and we put it on tap. And uh, it's our third best selling beer in our, our tap room out uh, of nice. 24. And uh, again, the other half guys were down here. They're crispy, crispy boy, you know, crisp light, light loggers. Right. Yep. Top three or four for them. So yeah, I do think that, but remember, I mean, I feel like we've been talking about the next year is the year of the craft lager for a long time. Mm -hmm. You're saying, Jen, more as a tasting room volume thing than three tier. I think, I think tasting room is slam dunk. Um, yeah. I do see it here a little bit like meanwhile, I don't know if you've heard of meanwhile, there are meanwhile yeah. pills here in Austin. I think those guys came from the pack Northwest, maybe yeah. uh, I forget which one. Anyway, um, that's everywhere here. 
And it just makes sense because some of the reasons that I think craft is is plateauing a bit is because of aging millennials, which was part of the core, right? Well, aging millennials can still drink pills, right? <laughs> and we're willing yeah. to pay up for it, right? We're willing to pay up for a tasty, easy drink. It's not going to give me a hangover. I can be social yeah. with it. So yeah. that's, yeah. Maybe in distribution say, I, too. I hope you're right, Jen, because it's just so sessionable that mm -hmm. you're just naturally going to sell more. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we were like, we were like our, our, our blue hen pilsner is always top five in our tasting room, too. So for dogfish, because we have Sam Adams, we don't go nationally with with our lager plays. They're, yep. they're regional in, in our tasting rooms. But we're really excited about American Light as a national innovation for the, the Sam brand. All right. Other predictions. Who's up, Harry? You're going to give away what you guys are talking about Monday? Oh, I, I think. <laughs> let me stretch for this. Oh, I, I think uh think we're going to have massive ski rationalization. It's already started. I think the chains are tightening up their boxes. And, you know, we, we kind of had a natural ski rationalization during COVID. And I think we're getting that second wave right now. In and all so, categories? What's that? When you say tightening up their boxes, do you mean in all categories for the chains? Or are we talking about craft beer right now? Yeah, I, I think Kraft's going to have a hard time in the cold box in the mm -hmm. spring. And um, I think Spirit RTDs will probably gain space, but fewer suppliers. And Modelo's just going to be the new AB, you know? It's gonna... do, you, do you guys think, uh, stay on that one for a minute, do you think Constellation's going to get more percentage, not volume growth in 2024, out of Modelo or out of Pacifica? At a Pacifico. pro percentage out of Pacifico, but at yeah. a share Modelo for sure. Yeah. yeah. I a mean, when, base when Jim Sabia spoke mm -hmm. at our conference last week, mm -hmm. the, you know, everybody thinks, well, gosh, Modelo, it's kind of saturated. But the way he described it, there's still so much run room for that brand. It's very regional and it's underrepresented in supermarkets. Um, so, yeah, I think they're going to gain space. I, I think this this kind of 30 year hegemony of ab dominating the mouse it chains has cracks in it for the first time mm -hmm. and i think i think boston beer is going to be a winner because the chains love you guys you always win the you know the the surveys on best supplier it's been easy just to stick with ab for these past 30 years cuz they're good at what they do and they have the most share and they they have the resources but this past summer with with what happened, I, I think it gave an entree to others, especially Constellation and like Boston Beer, even Heineken, you know, to step in and say, hey, let me manage, at least ma let me manage the high end or yeah. or the whole whole box. And put me in, coach. Yeah. Jim, what do you got? Um, so yeah, bullish on them. Yeah. Bullish on you guys, totally. Um, I Boston does this, right? And mm -hmm. I think you guys are like here. For a lot yeah. of reasons, right? For, I, I for... think it. I think we might meet. I think we need to give a, a what's it called, Jen? Legal disclaimer: We are uh, not we, yes. financial advisors. We need to leave a, a disclaimer <laughs> that uh, we are not. Uh, Jen's yeah. husband, Bill Cook, has one of the few buy <laughs> recommendations on Boston beer stocks. So. I think maybe the only buy, but that has the nothing to do buy. with me. <laughs> zero to do, literally, it has zero to do with me. We have synergies, yeah. but also, you know, legal you don't, don't sit around and talk like work at dinner yeah, that's an interesting question sam let's get to the bottom of this jen do how much pillow talk do you guys do about the beer industry <laughs> a lot <laughs> i mean beer is like oh you know speaking of this is where worlds yeah. collide all right sam you said you were an italian yes <laughs> i am yes. part italian you're yes. from the northeast i am from the south my husband yes. is not italian at all but he is from the northeast is it mario or mario well, I, what's weird is is Mario slash Mario's opt into their pronunciation, so it's a it's a, I don't know a trick question or unfair. One. We we all I always <laughs> growing up in, in when my family's the Mastriani's and Caligiones. If there were uh, Mario's on the sparks, they were they are, are on our spokes of our family uh, wheel. They they were Mario's, but there's a Mario dude down here. Okay. Uh, so I don't know yep. if there's a right or wrong answer. Jeff. All right, very diplomatic of you. I don't yeah. think anybody says Mario Kart. Let's go play Mario Kart. Do they? Harry, go to the Northeast. Yeah, oh. they do. In Jersey, they do. In New York, they do. To? Can I wait till summer? It's really cold. 
I was actually thinking of moving to New Jersey, but that's for a different conversation. Jesus. Speaking of Northeast, though, not New Jersey specifically, but, uh, you know, I do think prediction wise, yeah. two yeah. things uh, I would say. So, yeah, I I'm excited about the Boston Beer portfolio. Again, I'm biased, but I would say, that, you know, Twisted Tees, 25 year, you know, whatever overnight success I think is going to stay at least as strong as it has in 2023 for 2024. Like like I said, our, our Sun Cruiser, all early indications and in trying the liquid and um, excitement for the distributors who are getting it in the first round. I think that's going to do a great job. Um, I think the New Jersey brand uh, Surfside has done yep. a really good yep. job regionally. So I think that that non-carbonated hard vodka tea space is going to break up from regional to, to national excitement in 2024, similar regional excitement to national N New Haven style pizza. Is going to be oh. big things. Is that with big. clams? You know it. Does that sound delicious <laughs> to you guys or what? <laughs> I'm going to ask Harry. He has gout. Harry, I don't clam, have gout Clam anymore. and garlic pizza. Clam and garlic and Parmesan cheese pizza. Harry, uh, what do you? What's your immediate Pavlovian response? I mean, to that? that sounds awesome. Honestly, <laughs> when I, he tripped up on awesome, that was a little bit of vomit coming up. Sam, <laughs> did you hear that in his that, voice? That sounds great, Sam. <laughs> That sounds awesome. Yeah, like, it sounds very vomit salmonella. -ish. Vomit awesome. No, well, no it really I, does you know, sound good. You know, when I come up this summer, I'll I'll have a slice. We do a lot of focus grouping at Boston Beer, and I say that because nine out of ten Mario Marios are excited for clam garlic <laughs> pizza <laughs> across the country. Biscuits are huge oh! fan. New pose. Wake up, biscuit. Oh, that's so funny. The yeah, boging dog. Yeah, so wait, let's good. talk about the one we were drinking for a sec, because uh, Nordic Spring. Are, yeah. So the, this this moment brought to you by Dogfish Head. We did not pay for this moment, but Nordic <laughs> Spring. We we work as you guys know with a different artist every year on our art series cans. This is uh, Methane Studios did this beautiful job with some crazy monster in there. It's a uh, it is like a, a a sort of I call a Scandinavian IPA. It's got Danko rye in it. It's nice. got uh, it's got a uh, little bit of orange peel in it, and it's got some juniper, but really easy drinking Scandinavian IPA at six point five ABV. Nice. It's but good. No wonder I love it. It's got juniper berries, and I'm a gin drinker. So there you go. I mean, here we go again. <laughs> always wow. with the ingredients. Always. It's got always. juniper. It's got some kind of weird coriander from you know Haiti, and you know here we go. Sam, I that's can't... marketable. Take that to the bank. You should put that on your stuff. Weird coriander. Like I from know Haiti. weird coriander <laughs> from Haiti. From Sri Lanka. Do they grow coriander in Haiti? Sam knows. I I trust that Sam knows if they grow. <laughs> He's a James Beard nominated Haiti. brewer. James Beard award winning. Nominated, oh, like, yes. I think, forty four years in a row, but only one. My one. bad. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Um, I would guess the, tr the the climate in Haiti would 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 tolerate. Uh, yeah. uh, coriander but i'm not sure on that one i'll look into that one we finally uh, I, stumped them jen i just got to go to Ch chile because mariah and i and the kids nice. went to antarctica which is amazing and uh oh. but i got to go to santiago and i found this regional uh uh beautiful uh drink that we're going to do at our at our pub and it had these local white peaches and these and this local wheat so i'm really excited mm -hmm. for that that in innovation coming at our pubs here in, in a couple months well, no, cool. wait a minute. You just rolled over. This, you're, you went to Antarctica? I We did. As a family, we went. There was a Mariah's bucket list. And you, you we we didn't take the boat across Scary Drake Pat, Pat, We We cheated. There's one airstrip you can use, and you land between the Chinese scientific research uh, studio and the, and the Russian one. So we landed in there. We smuggled, you know, cans of colderest for obvious reasons. And had a blast hanging out with seals and and uh, penguins. That's, that's so awesome. cool. I've been it's, to Tierra Tierra del Fuego. That's down near there, right? Yeah, but it's I was in Argentina, I believe. Yeah, yeah, but on the other side, and that's down near the tip down there. The the yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was amazing. You, uh, fun fact for for your viewers and listeners: you cannot. It's the only continent in the in the world that you're not allowed to sit on. You can trudge around in your boots, and uh, but you can't sit down because they're afraid you might have weird bacteria on your hiney. 
hair. Really? Oh my no. God! But who? Hmm. I mean, who wants to sit down down there anyway? Harry it's definitely pretty... has weird bacteria on his hiney. I mean, <laughs> no, come on. I had to take that. That, it that is unproven. Open. You are not a doctor, and you're <laughs> certainly not my doctor. That's um, definitely true. Well, I did not know. Antarctica is also the only continent where beer business daily is not read every morning. It is, Fun fact. you know, and the people there seem much worse off for for it from what I saw. Yeah, you know, there are people there about the beer industry. You know, it's kind of sad. Just, it's the most collaborative continent in the world where all like the Russian base shares scientific fact finding with the American base and then them with the Chinese base. So it's probably an awesome study in how we as a global community of humans can better get along. Is mm. to Until just they make... find oil. <laughs> <laughs> Until they find some military benefit to seal oil or something and then all bets are off. That's interesting. I'm just, I, I think you're such a, a glass half full guy, Harry. But you're, <laughs> you're kind of right in this case because I think it was more populated back when the whale trade was more robust right. for the blubber and the and the oil. So you might be, you might be right. I, I I pine for those days. Who doesn't want to be a whaler? <laughs> Talk about a miserable job. Good God Almighty! You know, being whalers? a people bitch about being a beer merchandiser. All three of my sons bitched about it, and I'm like, you know what? Go to Tierra de Fuego and be a whaler for a winter. Let's see how that goes. And then they, like, you know, what? all of a sudden merchandising is not that bad. It's probably uh, sounds pretty good. Beer's heavy. Wing. Well, so are whales. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Bit That's facts get, out here. Doesn't get said enough. Uh, other all right, trends, other trends. What do you guys think of the Delta Nine surge? Yes. That, that unique opportunity in certain states. Where's that going and uh what do you guys think of that i i personally love it because it's a perfect i like drinking it. it's sociable and it gives a real nice buzz problem is you really can't drink more than one and so it's not a like a sessionable thing so that's a, a headwind the other thing is access if it can only be sold in dispensaries that's a non-starter but like in michigan or is it michigan or minnesota minnesota yeah, in Minnesota, if you can sell it in regular licensed accounts, I think it has a chance for sure it, it, at any price point. I, you know, I think it's uh, it's price elast inelastic, and I think it's very, I think it could be a thing. It's just a matter of getting state by state regulations where it can be accessed in a reasonable way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's personally, it's not like my favorite thing. I yeah. I don't, yeah. don't but, get too high is the worst no, experience. It's, 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 it's not good. It's terrifying. Like, I'm like Alice in Wonderland. I'm shrinking. It's bad. <laughs> really, I took her to really. a Harry Styles concert. And no, 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 no. No, I wasn't. No, was that was under the seat sucking her thumb for oh, most of the concert. God. It was Harry, terrible. It makes shit up. No, it wasn't the <laughs> Harry Styles concert. I was completely, well, not sober because I had some okay. beers, but no. Yeah. That was when we had like a meeting, a, a nice steak dinner and we were hiring Bianca. That's when I became like the little Alice in Wonderland shrink. But um, I do. Think You're saying the buzz is not for you. You don't do for well me. socially. The, the buzz is a, not yeah. for me. I'm yeah. a I'm a control freak and yeah. I still feel like I'm in control when I drink a couple beers. But like, give me one milligram of THC and I'm floating off the face of the earth. So I don't know how much, you know. I mean, obviously, there's already an established black market, as we all well know. Um, yeah. But there is some incremental gains to be had by legal marijuana. And I think that, you know, the Delta 9 is an interesting backdoor, if for nothing else, so that people can say, hey, look, we've kind of done this. We've kind of tested this. Like, for all intents and purposes, Delta 9 is like THC, THC yeah. like THC. And look, the world didn't explode. So I think that's an interesting component of it. But you mentioned teapot. So any chance yeah. to bring that to the States and Delta nine? Well, I know you guys wouldn't do that as Boston. Well, we are taking those learnings from Canada and excited about, uh, you know, the, what we see is great momentum uh, federally, but there's not been enough yeah. definitively done law wise federally yeah. for us to do anything here, but we're, uh, we're watching it intently and uh, we're really proud of how Paul and the teapot team have, brought that brand to, to life up mm -hmm. there 
Uh, so uh, we're, we're, we're really excited about it, but it's not something that we see in 2024 is going to be a big, big revenue driver for us outside of Canada. Back to something that you said, Jen, that I really want to circle back on is you said the last really good steak dinner you guys had together was when you were interviewing for somebody new. Do you yeah. guys ever, does Harry ever treat to really good dinners when it's actually the, the full-time people that work together or only oh, yeah. when, only when you're trying to woo someone? No, 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 no. Harry, Harry spends too much money all the time. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you're not my doctor and you're also not my accountant. I don't know what, I don't know what these PhDs you keep adding on to your job, but uh, I do spend so too I'm, much. I'm yeah. too generous uh, with employees. Uh, no, just... he is. He is. Listen, there's a lot yeah. of things that I complain about Harry about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, Harry. No, there's lots of things that I very much appreciate about Harry and the BBD fam. And we are the fam. And, and he does bring us around any table that we that we ask for. So nice. thanks, Dad. Aww. You bet. Anytime. George, Jordan's smiling somewhere, too. You, oh, guys yeah. were all together, you guys were all together last week. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was guys, great. Hey, guys, you know that sound means it's the next beer from Dogfish Head. <laughs> yeah. When you hear that sound, this one is All our right. coldest IPA. So the cold IPAs we know is a thing. Ours are pretty unique. We found a couple of hop rise that are taken right off of the vines and immediately flash frozen uh, to, 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 you know, retain all of their aromatic goodness. Using a lager yeast with this bad boy winter wheat, leaning into the old colder theme, delicious seven percent alcohol available in our variety packs right now, coast to coast. I really like that label. I think you hit a slam dunk the way it's silver like that it and understated. Cool. Looks like silver. it's frozen. It does look like there's icicles forming on my fingers, but nope, that's a that's yes. the power of power of design. Did you see his Edward Scissorhands esque uh, <laughs> video for this one, Harry? No, I didn't. It, we're gonna, it was pretty. We're good. gonna forward it. Megan's gonna forward that to you. But All it was, right. our, I think, our most watched video of the of the year. An homage to to uh, the Edward Scissorhands uh, movie of the past. I think I might actually. I think I might have seen it. But yeah, I think it, you did. Yeah. yeah. Um. What else? We got a real wrap in here, guys. We got a, we had a full what time flies. You know, sixty minutes at with dogfish always feels go. like Perfect. five. Always it really does. Like, sixty minutes with, with dogfish always feels right. like ninety minutes. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> you promised us sixty. It felt like ninety as usual, Sam. I appreciate you being on. You're. Your we're contemporaries. I always have to remind everybody that we even I look like I could be his grandfather. I we are the exact same age, and we kind of got into it at right about the same time. So we kind of grew up together in it. And I've seen you and your company grow to this behemoth and be very successful. And it's just I'm just glad to know you. Honestly, it's been fun, hasn't it? I always enjoy seeing both of your names on my my uh, schedule. I'm like, this one's gonna be fun, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna keep this going. And and Harry, this summer you really do need. I want I want a verbal contract that you'll stop by when you do this trip this summer and stay at our hotel. You know, I'll definitely get you free soap. We make beer soap. You pay full full price, but I'll get you uh, free soap at the at the hotel. <laughs> I don't know why everybody wants to give me free soap. Is that a, uh, is that telling me something? <laughs> that Biscuit? Well, remember I, I said that you soap. on the, the the continent of Antarctica, you, you specifically, yeah, there's a reason we're all giving you soap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. I got, uh, I got barnacle ass next time I went down there. All right. Well, listen, uh, thank you for being on. I want everybody to have a great weekend. And Jen and I will see you next week on right. BeerNet Radio. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Thank you, Sam. Take care. All right, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.